In our last genetics video, we looked at monohybrid crosses and went through a few examples. But what if we don't know the genotype we're crossing? We can do a test cross to help determine an unknown dominant genotype. Tallness is a dominant trait in pea plants. If you had a tall pea plant and did not know anything about the parent pea plants, it came from, you wouldn't know if your pea plant's genotype was homozygous dominant or heterozygous, as both would have the tall phenotype. You could figure out its genotype, though, through a test cross. A test cross is always between an unknown dominant and a heterozygous recessive genotype. You must use a homozygous recessive to cross or the unknown genotype will still be unknown after the cross. With our pea plant, we would cross our tall one with a short pea plant. As it is short, we know it's homozygous recessive. Let's make two Punnett squares just to see what would happen if our pea plant is homozygous dominant and another if it is heterozygous. If our pea plant is homozygous dominant, and we crossed it with a short plant, all of the new pea plants would be tall. If our plant is heterozygous, then half the new plants would be tall and half short. By looking at the F1 plants grown from our cross, we can determine the genotype of our pea plant. Now the number of offspring is a factor here. As mentioned with monohybrid crosses, we are determining the statistical probability of each outcome, and statistics is best seen with large numbers. If you flip a penny twice and both times it lands on heads, you wouldn't say this penny can only land on heads, you only flipped it twice. But if you flip the penny 5,000 times and it was all heads, then you could say it is a trick penny and it will always land on heads. As with that high of a number, you should see 50% heads and 50% tails for a normal penny. Let's discuss a genetic example of this. Going back to the tongue rolling gene. My dad can roll his tongue, which is a dominant trait. I don't know if his parents could. My mom, however, cannot roll her tongue. My dad could be homozygous dominant or heterozygous for tongue rolling. We don't know. My mom, we know, is homozygous recessive as she cannot roll her tongue. My parents had four kids, and we can all roll our tongues. From this information, can you determine my dad's genotype? Statistically, no. Four isn't a big enough number to be sure. Maybe my dad is homozygous dominant, and that's why we all can roll our tongues. Or we all just happen to get the dominant gene from him. And if my parents were to have a fifth child, that one would be recessive for the trait. So we cannot determine my dad's genotype information. Let's look at one more example. In sheep, lustrous fleece is dominant over normal fleece. A female sheep with lustrous fleece mates with a male sheep with normal fleece. One baby sheep is born with normal fleece. From this one baby, is it possible to know what the genotypes of the parents are? Even before the baby, we know the male sheep is homozygous recessive, as he has normal fleece. But using what we know of their one baby, can we say what the female sheep's genotype is? Yes. Because the baby has normal fleece, it is homozygous recessive. It got one recessive allele from its dad, but it had to get the other one from its mom. Therefore, the female sheep is heterozygous. In this case, we don't need large numbers to tell the genotype of the mom, as the offspring is homozygous recessive. It has to get a recessive allele from both parents. 
Be careful when doing test crosses and always look at all the information given as they can be tricky, but they can also be a lot of fun as they're like a mystery you're trying to solve. <laughs>